Hello everyone. Thanks for coming in. Uh, I'm Chinmay, uh, currently a product manager at Grab. Uh, I was not here at the pitch before, but I, I'm sure you saw two, two pretty ladies trying to <laughs> pitch a lot of things which, which I worked on last night. Uh, so the topic for today is uh, one of the hottest topics uh, that is going on in Southeast Asia, which is payments. Uh, so, and especially payments in Indonesia. So, I'm going to talk about it. We'll go. The agenda is that why Indonesia needs online payments, uh, which are the major players and innovators in Indonesia as of now, uh, what's happening in China and India, uh, and lastly, the opportunity for payment disruption in Indonesia. Um, while I'm at each section, I'm going to ask you guys for any Q&A so that you don't have to digest so much all at once and then, you know, shoot at the end. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot. I'm going to pause that in the middle. Uh, so why Indonesia needs online payments? Uh, so Indonesia is the fourth largest economy uh, in terms of population and 16th largest in terms of GDP in the world. and it is undoubtedly the biggest economy in Southeast Asia. Uh, Jakarta, if anyone has been there, is a crazy youth city with 30 million extended urban population. Uh, despite all of this hugeness, uh, only 36% of the 260 million Indonesians have bank accounts. Uh, and only 2% of the people have credit cards. This is surprisingly low number when you compare it with other economies. Uh, and for online purchases that happen in Indonesia, uh, when people, and if they're not cash on delivery, most of, 80% of the times people rely on bank transfers. Uh, and bank transfers, because of its nature, uh, traditional nature, the banks, in the way which banks operate are pretty hassle, are a hassle to the merchants and the consumers. Uh, so Indonesia needs online payments. Uh, I'll, I'll highlight two important uh, issues that uh, online payments will help uh, solve in Indonesia. So first is e-commerce growth. Uh, so e -commerce, strong e-commerce and payments infrastructure complement each other. Uh, uh, unlocking the payments will be the key to further e-commerce growth. So e-commerce has been growing at a, at a really good rate in Indonesia, but if you want if you want to put it at the next level, we need a strong payments infrastructure. And theoretically, uh, it has been proven that if your economy goes cashless, uh, then you should see a two to three percent improvement in its GDP, uh, which is which is a lot for an economy that is of size of Indonesia. Uh, and mass pay adopted payment uh, options increase the ease of local and international trade transactions. So it again helps the economy. The number two point is financial inclusion. Uh, Indonesia has a very poor financial inclusion and it can be attributed mainly to the lack of savings and credit uh, services offered especially to the poor in Indonesia. 80% uh, of the population not exposed to online commerce yet um, and lacks access to proper financial literacy and tools. Uh, uh, upon having more digital transactions uh, and having a strong online payment system, we can we we can see that the the, the pro payment providers can build uh, risk and credit profiles of the individuals and the apparently the risky uh, individuals. Uh, so so there's a reason why banks don't offer credit services, especially to the poor. They just assume that those people are riskier than the yeah. You need, you need. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, my name is Aliso, um, I'm a software engineer. My question, most likely you might bring it up, is that uh, when you look at what you've stated on yeah, your slides, it's more of a conventional method of money transfer. So you've got the rise of like Bitcoin, or even like for example what's, what's happening in East Africa. Okay, I'm from South Africa, but in East Africa they implement something like Mpesa where you use your mobile credit to make payments. So, yeah, that's... Yeah, so I'm not too sure if you might bring that up later, but I was I'm just... Bringing that yeah, up. yeah, so that's why I was quite curious, because you look at even like 
the iTunes store and even yeah, yeah, yeah. account you can use your credit for that. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, innovative things happening in Indonesia as of now. I'm going to go look at five major payment players. Not not comprehensive, but I'm going to talk about it. Uh, yeah, so I, as I was saying, the online data, once we have a lot of digital transactions, can be used by institutions to uh, categorize people's risk and credit profiles and then uh, give give them access to affordable loans, credit, financial services, so that they can make it big. They can, they can move to the next level and they can get more opportunities. Uh, so any questions? So far, from the audience. Before I move on to the next uh, section, now, yeah. Uh, I guess the, this section was regarding why we need online payments, right? Like uh, the need to penetrate the market. So I have a question: uh, in in Indonesia or in India, there are two major concerns when it comes to online transaction. One is the security. Yeah. The average guy is like. You know, it's everything is sorry. Everything is uh, online, right? Yeah. So it can be, and there the news outlets tend to hide the security breaches, ten million accounts stolen, etc., etc. Uh, which is fair, actually. Uh, right. So all of those things, uh, yeah. I mean, safety is one of the reasons, but it it is not a. It's it's something that we should overcome because the the benefits outweigh the risks. Uh, in terms of if if the economy goes cashless and everyone moves online, it increases opportunities. In, it increases trade. It increases the how well connected the economy is. So, but yeah. my question was like, so this concern comes from a common guy, right, layman. So how do you convince that layman? He can't look at the bigger picture. So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't. He's not concerned about the GDP. He yeah, just yeah, concerned yeah. the money coming out of his own yeah. pocket, right? So. Uh, so people still, so people have bank accounts. So they have they have that trust in the banks. That's one case. Uh, it just it's just a matter of time. You have to prove it to your customers that we are safe, we are reliable, uh, and we will not lose your money or we will not do fraud with you. So uh, providers like uh, Gojek or Grab, in, if you are aware of the players, the biggest uh, ride-hailing players in Southeast Asia are. Uh, are moving towards payments and they are seeing great adoption because of the fact that they have established services and trust uh, among their consumers uh, so so it's it's very natural for them to you know just bring this 10 million 20 million users that they have to to their payment wallets and then let them transact via that it's it's absolutely no brainer so you need to establish that sort of trust uh, i mean that's that's true for any kind of service it's not just online payments it's e-commerce it's uh, it's it's your financial investments. It's it's there everywhere. It's a first time uh, thing. Uh, uh, so I'll move on to the next section. Uh, I'll look at the major players and innovators in Indonesia. Uh, so first of all, we'll look at the top use cases of online payments. Uh, so these are the seven, eight, nine use cases I have. Uh, first of all, first one is the the phone recharge, top up, uh, food delivery e-commerce, uh, booking flights and hotels. Transportation is another major use case of for payments. Uh, P2P transfer, sending money to your friends and family. Uh, Cross-border remittances, uh, micro-lending and credit services. Uh, financial products and investments. Uh, so let's look at one of the f uh, first players in Indonesia, Doku Wallet. So Doku was the first payment gateway and online wallet in Indonesia. It was launched 10 years back, uh, 2007. Uh, first mover, we can say we can safely say that. So it has come a long way. Uh, so Doku Pay is a payment gateway that enables uh, businesses to accept payments from consumers across Indonesia and outside. Uh, then they have. So it's a payment gateway. So the second product they have is Doku Wallet. So this allows consumers to top up their account uh, wallet via ATM, via cash at convenience stores, or by linking up with their credit cards, debit cards. And the consumers can use the, the Doku Wallet to transact online pay bills uh, without having the need of a credit card or a bank account. Uh, and it has seen strong numbers uh, it processed $2 billion worth of transactions in 2016. 
uh, it is accepted across 10,000 Alpha Mart uh, stores. If, if any one of you has been to Indonesia, they have a lot of uh, these convenience stores spread across all the big cities, all the small cities everywhere. So it's accepted in all of these stores uh, and has one, more than 1 million registered e-wallet users. The next player, uh, everyone probably knows about it, uh, Gojek. Uh, Gojek is a transportation and lifestyle company focused only on Indonesia. So Gojek uh, launched their uh, online wallet called GoPay in almost a year back in April 16. Uh, and it can be used to pay for all the Gojek services across uh, all the variations of the services that they provide. And Gojek has been particularly pushing uh, its online uh, wallet through several promotions, a lot of marketing, and it has seen a lot of adoption across uh, the Gojek consumers. So as per the recent number, uh, it is widely successful. 50% of all the transactions that Gojek does go through their online wallet, which is, which is phenomenal. Uh, so how did they manage to do this? Uh, so one of the crazy things that they did was uh, they have a fleet of 200,000 drivers across Indonesia. So they they have uh, so basically, if you if you take a GoJack, you can pay the driver, take this uh, 100,000 rupiah, and top it up to my wallet. So these drivers are basically walking and talking ATMs. Uh, you can you can literally just you don't even have to go to an ATM. You can order a, a go massage and then they'll come to your place and then you just give them you know take this and top up my wallet and then gojek offers you huge discounts if you use their online uh, wallet so it's insane so th that's the reason behind this 50 percent uh, uh, adoption number and of course you can top up via offline stores uh, all the alpha marts all the indomaret all the and you can see the credits reflected uh, you can integrate with all the local banks and directly transfer money from your bank. Uh, and GoPay for Merchants is uh, launching this year as per the news that I read. Uh, so it's, it's going to be like a payment gateway for third party merchants. So third party merchants can start accepting GoPay as a payment tool, uh, payment option. So Go Gojek has a lot of maybe 10 million users who are using GoPay uh, only for Gojek services as of now. From this year probably onwards they'll start using it for third party e-commerce uh, and this will enable the millions of go, go pay users to uh, go online and shop at other other merchants uh, grab yeah so <laughs> grab is southeast asia's leading ride hailing platform and is reportedly developing a mobile payments platform i'm not aware of anything <laughs> I'm, I'll just read the news. So, <laughs> uh, so Grab Pay uh, enables customers to pay via cards, local bank accounts, and other e-wallets such as Android Pay, Alipay. Uh, Grab Pay credits was launched last year, and it is similar to GoPay uh, e-wallet. So it's an e-wallet where you can top up through convenience stores, through uh, through your cards, through, through your bank accounts, and it's uh, you can use that wallet across Grab services. Uh, Grab Rewards was also launched last year, which is basically a loyalty program to collect points uh, at several and use those points at several Grab partners. So this is meant to increase the stickiness across Grab services and also the partners that tie up with Grab. Uh, we uh, announced a partnership with Lipo Group uh, to enable Grab users to pay uh, across all the uh, services that Lippo Group offers. So if, if you guys don't know, Lippo Group is one of the biggest retail companies in Indonesia. And soon you will start seeing uh, Grab's uh, payment options being used at, Lip at Lippo. Uh, uh, Lippo's several retail companies, department stores, hypermarts, cinemas, coffee shops, and for e-commerce as well. Uh, the next interesting player is Kudo. Uh, they have done something very interesting. Uh, so their social mission, their mission is to enable every Indonesian to shop online. Uh, so they have a, they have an agent consumer model where they sign up agents, and these agents are basically people who have 
who are savvy enough who have done who have done e-commerce who have cards who have bank accounts who know how to transact online safely and these agents are kudo has at least like 100000 of these agents who who help other consumers who are not so savvy who don't have credit cards who don't have bank accounts or even the basic literacy of how to purchase and transact online they they go to these agents and they uh, the, these agents uh, help them transact do things online so this is another very interesting way of uh, penetrating the e- uh, e-commerce market uh, through through existing um, supply of agents who who are savvy enough uh, so mainly kudos uh, end consumers uh, kudo is targeting consumers without bank accounts or even without in- internet uh, in small towns and cities mainly helping them transact online uh, it is basically enabling online to offline offline to online online to offline transactions uh, e-commerce by opening up the e-commerce access to those who who would never come online if this service was not there uh, yeah the the last player i want to discuss today is bank mandiri uh, so bank mandiri bank is one of the biggest banks in indonesia and they launched their e wallet uh, called mandiri e cash and it is one of the dominant players because because of the lot of uh, traditional bank accounts that mandiri users have and all the also a strong brand name and all of that so uh, e cash uh, lets any user regardless of uh, whether he has a smartphone or not whether he has a feature phone they can register with e cash via simple ussd service and they can transact uh, with that ussd service to do top ups do validate payments uh, money withdrawals from atms things like that so uh, an e cash customers don't need to go to the bank to do anything they can transact via their phone uh, without even having a mandiri bank account so you don't need to have a bank account to register with e cash first uh, and uh, so these two drivers as you see they are grab bike drivers and uh, yeah so uh, grab did a special integration with mandiri e cash and this actually uh, saw adoption across consumers and also the drivers liked it because it enables instant cash outs so one of the issues with that everyone complains about is the cash out or the bank transfers take at least 3 days to 5 days but uh, this e cash e wallet enab- uh, enables them instant cash out so if they earn like some money today they'll get it at by the end of the day so so that's the beauty of the going online and having e wallets so any questions so far before i move on uh, about the model of kudos right of the app yeah. what's the incentive for the agents uh, they get commissions uh, out from uh, from the e-commerce vendors i guess from the from the consumers as well so if you do like a 10 dollar phone top up like let's say star hub it's not in singapore but i'm just giving an example so you, let's say you do the top up you will probably get 20 cents uh, maybe startup will pay you or the or the end user will pay you right uh, so it is basically so we already have that sort of model it's just not large it's not it's just not crowd sourced this is this is a crowd sourced model where you me everyone can become an agent and start helping other people to come online it's not just going to be a set of stores physical stores located across the region it's, it's people moving around here and there can help transact help you transact online any questions um, there was news that grab is about to acquire oh. there was news that grab is about to acquire kudo based on your rumors <laughs> rumors <laughs> this uh, just because i mentioned Gra- kudo after grab does not imply anything <laughs> it's just coincidence uh and i have i particularly have no idea of what's going on like i'm being honest even being an insider at grab i don't know what's happening it's it's all the news i read on tech crunch it's acquire acquire it's all rumors let's say supposing you are the ceo what do you see <laughs> make me the ceo first <laughs> let's go ask anthony that <laughs> Any questions? Or should I move on? Okay, moving on. So, let's look at China and India, which are another crazy. 
So payments in China, China is one of the most advanced uh, uh, markets in terms of online payments and e-commerce and everything. Uh, they have done some phenom phenomenal crazy things in all the industries that they are in uh, e-commerce, transportation, payments. Uh, you, you, you call it out if they have done some something in each of the area. So in, in regard to payments, so there are three major players, uh, Alipay, WeChat Pay and Union Pay, uh, top three players. Uh, the use ca top use cases that you see are basically you can scan your QR code inside any store uh, in any almost anywhere in China and then you can pay using each of these wallets. Uh, you can use the digital wallet for e-commerce while you are at home trying to transact online or on your phone. And then you can uh, do the P2P transfers to your friends. So if anyone was following the new, uh, there was Chinese New Year last month, you, you would have seen like people are sending, uh, what's that called, Hongbao? Hongbao. Yeah, people are sending small Hongbaos with red pack, like, you know, digital red packets to each other, to friends and family. Uh, so that sort of uh, thing, it's it, the use case for this. Uh, so, and it has seen mass market adoption of online payments. Unlike uh, Indonesia or India, it, the penetration is really high. Uh, people actually prefer to just use the wallet rather than, you know, pay in cash or do other things. Uh, so, so it is it, all of these things are enabling China. China is the closest to cashless compared to India or Indonesia, uh, or even US. So, and it's mobile first. So, 80% of the online payments that happen uh, are done via mobile. Uh, when we compare this to the US, this US does not do all all of its payments or transactions online. People still use desktops, uh, that tab or other larger screens to to transact. Uh, yeah, so next thing, major thing is happening in China is the Alipay revolution. Uh, so Alipay is the most used payment app in the world uh, and is connecting big and small merchants to its 450 million active users on its platform. So it's a huge pool of, uh, it's 2x the population of Indonesia who are on the app, to put it that way. Uh, so, and it's it's an all-in-one lifestyle app. You can literally have just one app on your phone and you can use it for transferring money, paying at restaurants, booking flights and hotels, financial investments, booking a taxi, a, either a Didi or, or a Didi, yeah. There is no Uber anymore in China, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, food delivery, booking movie tickets, paying utilities, paying at supermarkets, uh, and a lot of other things uh, and it's not just in China it is in, it has entered Europe it has uh, partnered with other international merchants in Southeast Asia it, uh, Grab and Alipay have partnered and Grab accepts Alipay payments on its platform making it convenient for all the Chinese uh, nationals that visit Southeast Asia for traveling and business purposes uh, yeah As, uh, I wanted to just quickly go through this uh, screen. Uh, so WeChat Pay, so how the QR code operates is, is as simple as this, so three steps. You just open your app, you tap the quick pay, you, it opens a QR code, you, you, the merchant takes the photo of this QR code and be, uh, gets the payment, uh, the, uh, the relevant amount of 30 yuan or something. Uh, so it's as simple as this to, to pay with your uh, wallet, with your phone. Uh, next big market, India. Uh, so India is trying to move towards cashless, and but it still does 86% cash transactions. Uh, but this will change. This is a, this is changing, and this is this will change in the next one, two to three years to five years. We'll start seeing a lot of uh, on uh, online payments happening. Uh, so cashless is convenient. There is no hassle of change. Easier to track savings. Uh, do e-commerce. These are these are these reasons are cited by like people who are uh, like vegetable sellers, small merchants, small uh, you know uh, taxi drivers. They all cite these reasons as the most common uh, reason to use an online wallet rather than dealing in cash. Uh, cashless uh, transactions are possible via uh, 
Aadhaar UID linked phone account without needing smartphone and internet access. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys know, but uh, India has every person, every citizen of India has a UID, uh, which is a unique national ID, uh, and that is linked. That can be used to give you an e-wallet, and then you can use that e-wallet uh, to transact across different services uh, without having the need of smartphone or internet. Uh, people are starting to accept e-payments and helping move towards a cashless economy and government itself is investing in training consumers and merchants to move towards cashless. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Elisa again. I'm quite curious, I mean, obviously when we talk of India, we talk of China and we even talk of um, Indonesia. I presume it's also the class of people who are using the services. So I'm quite curious, as in, do you have the demographics as to who actually uses these services? So, so, so like, you know, if I use Apple Pay, I'll presume to be like in the middle. IPhone user. Yeah. Yeah. Using so, an iPhone user. Yeah. So if, for example, no, no, I, I'm, I'm actually, okay, I'm using an Android phone right here. So I don't know as to how that's ultimately uh, applicable, but like even Android Pay. Android Pay is still something that I can say would be for your middle class to upper class. Even if, for example, you're an Android user, I think it'll be a case of um, yeah. you still need to have like a bank account or whatever. Yeah. So if you have like a low end phone, you would yeah. need to use yeah. it. So, um, like in terms of the cashless payments, as in who are the demographics that are here? Uh, so that's the uh, that's the whole point of uh, you. I mean, these services which are Android Pay, Apple Pay, they are not really deeply penetrated. You yeah. you you need a you still need a bank account and a credit card to you know have an Apple Pay. You can't just go and hey Apple Pay. I, how will you deposit your cash in that account? My, my question is just demographics. As uh, the demographics yeah, yeah. So demographics for this uh, for these. Services so it depends on the service, right? For Apple Pay, Android Pay, as you said, it would be most likely the the top end users, the high spenders who live in big cities. But uh, for so it's it's how you adopt your service to different demographics, right? So Alipay, uh, I'm pretty sure they allow uh, you to put put uh, cash in your uh, wallet through probably a 7-Eleven, you can just give them some money and they'll, you'll see their credits reflected. So that, that sort of service does not have any dependency on a bank account or a credit card. And it can be used on a very low end smartphone or even some of the services that I mentioned like Mandiri eCash, uh, you don't need, even need a smartphone. They, they enable you to transact via feature phone, via OTP validation. Uh, so all of those things, it's all about localization and adapting to the specific demographics. So that's what the pen, that, that will increase the penetration. Uh, so I, I'm sure all the major players are trying to move towards that way because all the, the top level, it's not going to increase your uh, service by 10x. Uh, yes, so next thing that India did this year was the, the demonetization. Uh, so demonetization basically uh, has led to cash disruption and opened up digital payments opportunity in the Indian market. Uh, forced adoption towards cashless in a, in a way, so which is why you will see more and more transactions are going cashless now. And Paytm uh, is similar, it has a similar place like that of Alipay, it's not that big, but it is. it will eventually become some, somewhat at that scale. So it, it was one of the biggest beneficiaries and it clocked in $1 billion of transactions just in December. Uh, and uh, so, and Paytm recently, uh, the transactions on Paytm mobile wallets doubled in just a couple of months. Uh, and it recently announced, pla announced plans to move, go the Alipay way, which is basically enable small merchants and traders to, and even consumers to just, uh, pay via QR codes and pay via their app. Uh, so if I go uh, go in a taxi ride, I I can just like, we can just tap our phones together and hey, payment is done. You don't need to deal in cash. Uh, it is already happening, but you need more adoption across the region. Uh, so next I will move on, yeah. In recent years, um, Alipay has been expanding really fast globally by acquiring a couple companies in India and in Thailand and 
last one is an amalgam. How do you see that as a threat towards uh, or disruption of the are, business? Are you as a threat to KTM? No, no, no. Uh, they just bought a lot of company. Yeah. Uh, how do you see this as a threat or a pot potential disruption? Uh, for in a Indonesia, you mean? Uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, it is, it, it depends on how things move, happen this year, right? Like Alipay can in, uh, integrate with a lot of players and, you know, uh, but it does not have a strong use case like that of Grab or Gojek. Uh, Grab and Gojek have people who transact every every week who who are, you, so you need to have a strong use case before you you start seeing any significant returns, right? You, it, it is Alipay is playing the same role as Apple Pay or Android Pay. It's it's at the same level of that. It's not deeply penetrated, uh, so it's not really a threat uh, to the local players. So I'll move on to the next uh, section, which is opportunity for disruption. Uh, I didn't go into the demographics, but uh, I'm trying to s show you some numbers of. Uh, so the population of China, India and Indonesia, internet users, uh, internet penetration in China is uh, much higher than India and in that in India is much higher than Indonesia. Uh, internet users growth in India is su surprisingly huge, 30% compared to China and Indonesia. So this also points to the fact that internet infrastructure in Indonesia is not catching up at, at, uh, at par with the e-commerce or the online payments. Uh, and the bank accounts uh, penetration. So China has almost 80% of the people who have bank accounts. India has 53%. Uh, Indonesia is even lower at 36%. Uh, so the so so there is a huge. This points to a huge opportunity for disruption in Indonesia. Uh, it is the next big market after China and India, uh, ripe for disruption. Um, E-commerce as e-commerce and payments penetration is still very low compared to those big two big markets. Uh, and next good thing is that there is no dominant player like like Alipay uh, in, in Indonesia. There are a lot of fragmented uh, players across the region who who have significant user uh, user proportion, but there is no one big player who has taken the whole market by its own. So there is still a lot of opportunity to disrupt this. Uh, and to, un to come back to his question, right? So there is no one big player because all the players that who have a e-wallet don't have strong use cases. That they don't have. So Kudo, for example, uh, Doku, for example, was the first mover in Indonesia. It has seen growth. It has seen a lot of transactions, but it is it does not have a strong use case like uh, those of consumer companies like, uh, for example, Tokopedia. Or so if Tokopedia develops its own. Tokopedia is another e-commerce player in Indonesia, a billion dollar company. If it develops its own e-wallet, uh, it will start to see a lot of adoption because they have a strong e-commerce use case. Uh, so third thing is the Indonesia government is supportive. They, they plan to move towards a digital economy and you, you can see all their ministers talking about digital, go, go digital, go cashless in all of their speeches. And there has been recent uh, work on the ground for mass adoption of bank accounts across Indonesia and moving everyone to online UID, similar to the way India did. Uh, so EKTP is what it, the project is called. Uh, another reason is that the traditional banks have not done much in terms of, despite having a big, uh, big base of existing consumers, they have failed to utilize the opportunity uh, to bring more and more people online. Uh, and drive mass adoption of online payments. So I like to end with this statement. So what we need to, what Indonesia needs to catapult its digital economy to the next level is an online payments system that is widely accepted, uh, works smoothly on mobile devices and makes it easy and safe for consumers to pay for things online. Uh, yeah, uh, that's all from my side. If you guys have any questions, please shoot. Okay, Five minutes. Okay, uh, so my question is, what do you think is the biggest technical or operational challenge to build an e-payment system? I mean, because from my point of view, from a user point of view, it's just like a virtual credit, right? Which, uh, like any game systems have, uh, what's the biggest technical or operational challenge? Uh, 
Okay, I'm, I'm not an expert in building payment systems, but uh, I would say the risk and the security and the fraud part of it, when you integrate with 10 other merchants, on the surface, as a consumer, you will just see one payment option that you are paying for. But on the back end side, there's a lot of things happening, a lot of uh, fraud checks, a lot of machine learning, data science going on to see what are the risk profiles. Uh, and uh, especially Grab, if you try to rig the system, you will get banned automatically. Uh, so all of these are challenges which, and there, there, are, there is a lot of gaming in payments. Like there are a lot of frauds which companies lose millions of dollars every, every month, every day. Uh, but so these are the major challenges. How do you uh, cater to the fraud and the, the risks and the security of it, the data security of your transaction? Thanks for the sharing session. Um, so my question is, uh, so the payment industry is a highly regulated industry, and especially when it comes to legal nature, it's uh, you know how the government can can always change. Yeah, that's very quickly. Yeah. They ban Uber in one day, and then they decided that hey, no, I don't, we don't want to ban Uber. Okay. <laughs> so as a product manager, uh, how do you factor all this uh, uncertainty when you design your product? <laughs> so this is this is a regulatory uh, concern. So I want the the product that I work on is uh, is related to driver onboarding. I don't work on payments if that's what you're thinking. But uh, so driver onboarding uh, because the regulations keep changing. Uh, the way we get drivers and the way we uh, up vet drivers to come on our platform also changes. And the regulations have been changing. If you if you Think about Singapore, right? They have introduced new regulation called uh, the LTA has introduced new regulation for private cars. So that's gonna affect the product. So things like this, you can plan in advance because we already knew last year that this is gonna happen. Uh, you can make your product, uh, you can make your code modular enough to adapt to these changes because you know these are this, these are gonna happen. Some of these you can't. If you don't know, you can't you can't do anything about it. But if you do know, then you can plan for it in maybe architectural ways or uh, in some ways. Hi, thanks for the presentation. It was really interesting. My name is Abraham. I come from Indonesia, but I work here. So this is very interesting for me. So the question would be like, you said that there is no major player in Indonesia because there is no strong use case. And then the one that you gave example is Tokopedia. And then I'm curious, about with China and India as well, like uh, how does Alipay and Pay Pay TM started? I mean, like, do they have a really strong use case? And for Indonesia, I think Gojek may have a great chance on the yeah, next yeah. big major. Uh, yeah, Gojek and Grab have strong use cases. So, for example, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm I'm talking. I know the volumes and everything, so I'm talking in terms of the volumes that each of the players see. Uh, uh, so, Grab has major use cases like uh, transport, uh, like taxi rides, car rides, food, uh, bike rides. Gojek has some, uh, more services than Grab has, like uh, food, uh, massage, clean, all of, you can get your medicines, get buy from a supermarket. You, basically your driver can do literally anything for you. Uh, so this kind of stickiness is necessary to have a, so this is a strong use case. Like people need to come to your platform again and again and again so that your e-wallet is effective. And then you can use that e-wallet at other merchants. Can you give us a uh, little bit story about ATM and Alipay? I mean, how did they start it? Just a little bit. Because I'm, So Paytm, it's very interesting. So Paytm and Alipay, I think, started with phone top-ups. So, so phone top up is a recurring transaction. You have to you top up if you are a prepaid uh, SIM user. You have to top up your phone every few weeks or every month. Uh, so that was one of the use case. You you take some of these use case and you start bringing people on uh, on your platform. Then you add more use cases like let's integrate with the the so Alipay has integrated with Didi. Uh, uh, Didi service. So Didi is the major transportation uh, cabs, cab hailing company in China. Uh, it is 10 times, 20 times bigger than Grab or Gojek or uh, any other companies. Uh, so they have integrations, they have 
they have increased stickiness through all in one kind of app so that you don't need to install you know uh, other apps and which so people keep coming it's it's a one one place to do everything so that's how you build stickiness thank you so we just take one last question yeah Okay, uh, thank you for the presentation. So my question is, uh, because you mentioned that uh, e-commerce and payments are, they, they are going to be developing together. And I know that Alipay actually started by uh, using with Taobao for the payment side. Okay. So, uh, because, but in Southeast Asia, payments and e-commerce seems like two different topics. Yeah, they, are, yeah. they are developing yeah. separately. Yeah. So how can you see that? Why are people not integrating with each other? Or why, why they are not in a line? That would be part of the company's strategy. I have no clue why Tokopedia is not entering or Traveloka, which is another unicorn, is not entering the payments area. But but you do see players like Gojek and Grab moving towards the. So that's that's one of the ways to one of the strategy to penetrate this market. So it's it's a it's a very sub subjective to company. Okay, so I guess we'll end the session today. Uh, in this session right now. So I think we can yeah. continue questions after this session. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So, Thank you, guys. Give Shima a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, last slide. Uh, if you want to come work with us, find these two ladies. They are, they are hiring. <laughs>